All right, guys, so today we're going to continue talking about components. So we are going to learn um, the next <coughs> few components that we're going to talk about um, and the other parts of the computer that you are going to pick out. Um, so at this point, we've covered kind of the things a computer can't really exist without. Um, now we're going to move into a few more essential things, but a lot of kind of accessories and ways to kind of customize the computer you have. So the first component we're going to talk about today is called the optical drive. You guys have all experienced this if you've ever used a CD or DVD in a computer. Uh, but the optical drive is the device that the computer uses to play optical media. Uh, that includes CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays. Um, really a good rule of thumb is just remembering that optical media is anything that's in a circle. Um, you can remember that because the first letter of optical is O, and O is shaped like a circle. Uh, it goes in the case and connects to the motherboard via a cable, usually SATA. We're going to talk more about SATA on a, uh, I think in a couple slides, uh, but that's kind of the cable. Remember, everything has to connect back to the motherboard. So all the signals from the you know, CD or DVD or Blu-ray you're playing are sent back and forth to the other components through the SATA cable on the motherboard. Um, the case will have a bay, so a specific compartment. For the optical drive, it opens when pressed. That's when you see on the outside of the case and you press that button and the optical drive opens up. Um, the best optical drives will play Blu-ray because that has the highest storage capacity of any optical media. Um, it also ends up running the best because it's a little bit faster uh, and usually higher quality. So if you want to know kind of how quality an optical drive is, uh, look at what it's capable of playing and the ones that are Blu-rays are usually the best. Um, some optical drives are also capable of writing on CDs and DVDs. That's called burning. Um, oops. But if um, some optical drives are just capable of doing normal reading and just demonstrating and uh, displaying whatever is on the disc. Uh, but yeah, optical drives play optical media. Blu-rays are the ones that have the highest storage capacity. That's really important though. Next slide. Um, so expansion cards. Uh, are components that clip into slots on the motherboard and improve specific functionality of the computer. So the only one that we're going to talk about is a video card, uh, but some other expansion cards are things like a sound card that improves sound capabilities, uh, a capture card which, allow, which allows you to capture what's going on on the screen, um, any of you that are in competitive gaming, and like I've ever seen Twitch, um, that's a, a program that uses a capture card. Um, but the video card, also called a graphics card, is the most common example. It upgrades the display capabilities of a computer. Uh, a lot of times the motherboard has built-in display capabilities, but a video card can kind of enhance that if you're going to be doing stuff on the computer that requires a high level of graphics, either video games, streaming movies, whatever. Uh, video cards are also sometimes called the GPU or graphics processing unit because they process everything computers displaying. Much like a CPU kind of processes everything the computer is doing instruction-wise, like every step-by-step -step part of the program, the graphics processing unit, the GPU, uh, does all the calculations to determine what should display where and how it should look. Uh, that's why it has a fan on it, because it's always working, and you don't want it to get overheated. Okay, input-output devices uh, connect to the computer and allow information to travel to and from the device. You can see some examples over here on the right. Um, there are two different types of devices. Not everything that plugs into the computer is an input device. So an input device is anything that allows the user to give the computer information, such as a keyboard or mouse or a microphone. Uh, a keyboard and mouse, obviously, you're inputting and telling the computer what to do. Um, a microphone, you are giving the computer audio recording. I am using the microphone right now on my computer to record this. An output device allows a user to receive information from the computer, such as a monitor, speakers, or a printer. Um, the monitor shows you what's happening inside of the computer, the speakers lets you hear it, and the printer obviously is an output device because you can physically get things from the computer. Um, any device that allows you to upload or give the computer information is an input device. Any device that lets you receive or see information from the computer is an output device. Right, the computer uses a variety of cables to connect devices and send data and instructions. So we're going to talk about a few of the highlights. There are four we're going to talk about. Um, USB, you guys have all experienced. That's this top one. Um, it stands for Universal Serial Bus. Universal, of course, means a lot. Serial means it sends data one at a time, and bus just means a pathway for data, as we learned about with the motherboard. Um, you'll see USB on just about every component, uh, particularly keyboards and mice. 
video cables, so the two most common ones are HDMI and VGA. So HDMI is this one right here. VGA is this one right here that's on like kind of more bigger TVs and maybe older technology. Um, Smartboards have VGA a lot. Uh, video cables include HDMI VGA. HDMI is digital and a little higher quality. VGA is analog and lower quality. So HDMI is kind of the one you would want. It also does audio. And then a SATA cable transfers data and is used by hard drives and optical drives to connect to their motherboard. So this is a SATA cable right here. Um, if you're building a desktop PC, your hard drive and optical drive will have a SATA cable with it uh, that you'll see goes into the motherboard. You can remember that because SATA rhymes with data. SATA sends data. Okay, every computer needs a Wi-Fi card. So the Wi-Fi card is responsible for allowing the computer to connect to and communicate with wireless networks. Uh, you can see that both these Wi-Fi cards have, well, this is a Wi-Fi card up here. It has the antenna um, that's capable of sending and receiving signals. Um, some Wi-Fi cards are built on the motherboard, as you can see down here. You see the antennas right here. A laptop would obviously not have kind of these antennas, but sometimes they go back up behind the display, or they might be really small built into the motherboard inside the laptop. Um, Wi-Fi cards have different capabilities and use different types of Wi-Fi. Their uh, speed is usually measured in megabytes per second. Must be compatible with the router you have. So when you guys are buying Wi-Fi cards, you'll see megabytes per second. You might see gigabytes per second. Gigabytes are more than megabytes. So uh, if it's in GBPS, that'd be a better quality Wi-Fi card. Uh, but when you, you should know what router you have in your home network. We'll talk about that sometime soon. Uh, your Wi-Fi card has to be able to use the same type of Wi-Fi, and we'll go over that as well. But for now, Wi-Fi card gets you on the wireless network. Uh, sometimes it'll be built into a motherboard, and the motherboard says Wi-Fi. Other times you'll have to buy it, and it'll clip into the motherboard using kind of these gold uh, teeth you see right here. Okay, last one we're going to talk about. The operating system is the actual software the computer runs. So if you want to think of an example, uh, the car is all the physical parts, it's all the hardware, um, but there's got to be a person behind the wheel controlling how that can, car goes and what that car can do. Um, I'm going to drive a car different from a professional race car driver. So think of it like that. Um, each operating system is different and each has advantages and disadvantages. Here's kind of a picture of the four most common ones. Um, so Chrome OS is cheaper. You guys have Chrome OS, uh, but it can't run many programs, but on smaller computers, and ones that need kind of basic internet and document editing and stuff, Chrome OS works out really well. Uh, Linux is an open source, uh, which means anyone can edit it. So anyone can go in and kind of customize the, the features for Linux. There are people who work for Linux and make sure that it's all good. But think of like a Wikipedia of what computers can do. Uh, it also can't do a lot, but it is cheap. Um, Windows. So Windows is very good for gaming and file creating because it has all the Microsoft products built in. Um, but gaming is kind of the biggest draw for Windows. If you're wanting to do that, Windows is the one you need. Uh, Mac is not good for gaming, but it is very good for photo, video, and audio editing. It has better programs for that. It's also less at risk for viruses than Windows are, um, just because the software is a little harder to, to tap into. That doesn't mean Macs are extremely invincible to uh, viruses and malware, but it is a little bit harder to infect than a Windows PC.